A few months back, I did a review video on the Spectre DIY Bitcoin hardware wallet. And one of the points I made in that video is even though it's been around since 2020, the Spectre Shield variant of Spectre is still one of the most fully featured DIY devices around. And in terms of having all the features like being air gapped, having secure element backed storage, having tamper resistance through a locked down bootloader, and having a nice big touch screen to boot. But the biggest problem with the Spectre Shield when I originally made the video was availability and price. They were simply too hard to get and were too expensive. So in this video I'll be running through my solution to both of those problems and that is the Shield Lite. I'll talk a little bit about the process that I went through to develop it, run through its basic functionality, how to put it all together and I'll also run through how to add batteries to your Shield Lite unit. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now, this is the original Spectre Shield board. I actually ordered this one from the BTC Frankenstein store and used it in my previous video. And I believe that only about 100 of these were ever actually made. That said, all of the design documents for the Spectre Shield have actually been on the Spectre DIY GitHub since 2020. The challenge was that some of the parts and the build materials from 2020 are no longer available. So I did have to do a little bit of design work and make some substitutions, answer some of the engineering questions that PCB way had along the way. After a few weeks of waiting, the first batch of Spectre Shield boards arrived from PCBWay. Basically, I just had to add the battery to them to connect the QR scanner, plugged in the board, put in the smart card, turned it on, and it worked. Smart card was successfully detected, the QR code scanning worked, and the battery charger charged correctly and did in fact charge the battery and didn't cause it all to catch fire and blow up. So that was fantastic. So I was really happy with this. Not only did I have the first working Spectre Shield boards that had probably been made since 2020, but I'd also been able to validate all of the design documents that were on the Spectre DIY GitHub. And one thing I'll mention while I'm at it is while I didn't really want to get into the business of running an e-commerce store, some of this DIY stuff can be difficult to get. So I've actually just thrown some of the uh, original Spectre Shield boards that I had fabricated on there that you can buy if you like, or if you're happy to order a couple of them, you can actually just jump onto PC Ways shared project service, select PCB plus assembly and order some yourself. But we needed to do something about price. And basically there are actually a bunch of different aspects of this design that could be modified to cut the cost dramatically. And also, uh, you know, increasing the size of some of these tiny little components to make it much easier to assemble by hand. So we wanted to make sure that we could stick as closely as possible to the original form factor so that existing cases for the Spectre shield could be used with the shield light with no or minimal modification. And I didn't really want to work with the free version of the circuit maker tools or fork out for Altium 365. So I decided to do all of the design work in KiCad, which is basically a free and open source electronic design tool, which means that anyone who wants to build on the work I've done on the Shield Lite, both now or in the future, can easily do so without having to buy any software. So basically after recreating the schematics in KiCad and laying out the PCB, it was time to order some boards. It worked and was already a fraction of the price of the full size Spectre Shield board. I did a couple more refinements, both in terms of cost and quality of life. I sent a bunch of these boards out all around the world and the reports from the beta testers have been fantastic, which has been really great to see. If we just compare these two boards side by side, you'll see firstly, this one is much smaller. The components on it are all much larger and all of the components on this one are on a single side of the board, making it much cheaper and easier to get assembled if you want to do a shield light. And I've actually ordered a bunch of these that I put on my little store, or just like the original Spectre Shield board, you can actually just order the PCB plus assembly directly from PCBWay delivered to your door. And the final option, particularly with the shield light, is assembling it all by hand. So enough design talk, let's start assembling something. So the most basic piece of functionality that you get with the shield light is the smart card reader with this little interface I see just here. And basically for the most basic setup for Spectre Shield Light, you'll just need the development board for Spectre DIY, the Shield Lite board, and a Java card to run the Spectre DIY Java applet. And if this is all we want, basically I'll just firstly make sure the power is on the USB header, which it is. I'll just connect the board on like that. 
In terms of Java cards, the J3H145 is the one you want. You can order them in a few places or in bulk from the AliExpress Fetien store or just from my little web store, either with the Spectre DIY applet loaded or just blank. And if you do have a blank Java card, you'll need something like a USB smart card reader to be able to flash it. But the process real quick is you're going to want to go to the Spectre Java card GitHub, go onto the releases page and download the uh, memory card applet. And once you've got that, you're going to download the latest release of Global Platform Pro for whatever operating system you happen to be on. I'll just download the one for Windows. And basically, once you've got those two things, you'll also need to make sure you have a working Java environment for Global Platform Pro to work. And then once you've got that, you just go into the folder, downloaded everything in. In this instance, it was just downloads. And I'll just type in gp install memory card applet.cap. Make sure that this is plugged in wow. to the card reader. And then I'll just hit enter. <laughs> and there we go. And basically, I'll just put the smart card in with the contacts facing down. And in terms of power, if you are worried about connecting the data pins on the USB port, you could use a charge only micro USB cable or just some of these magnetic type micro USB charge cables. They don't have any data pins connected at all. So we can just stick that in the bottom there, connect the other end to power and then just plug it in like that. And there we go. You can see that is in smart card mode, giving us secure element back storage, basically with the unlock pin uh, being tied to this specific smart card here and the mnemonic being saved onto this smart card as well. Now, the next thing we'll talk about adding is the QR scanner module. Now, the QR scanner module we want is the GM65. It is the one that works the best. And if you're an existing Spectre DIY user, you can actually just reuse the QR code scanner and the ribbon cable from your WaveShare QR code scanner. In terms of connecting the camera, it's actually easier to do it without it being plugged into the development board. So basically, we will get our QR scanner module. We will make sure the ribbon cable is connected onto it with the connectors with the shiny side facing up. We'll just open up the ribbon connector there. Slide this in like that. And then slide it shut. That will hold it in place. And then basically, just like the full specter shield, there's a little plastic thing that this camera sits in. And then we then just sort of feed the cable through the hole. It does fit. And the excess will just sort of stick out the top like that. We can then just sort of sandwich it all back in together like that. And then we can just test out that it all works. So we'll power this back up this time because it's got the QR scanner. It'll actually beep when we turn it on. There we go. The quickest way to test that everything's working is say import recovery code from QR. You can actually see that has started to scan now. If I just scan seed QR that I've got here on hand, we can see that that works great. And just like all of the other bits and pieces so far, you can also just grab one of these from my little web store. All right, so the last thing I'll show you is how to assemble it all into a case and I'll also run through how to add some batteries into the device to give you the same sort of portability that you could get from the original Spectre Shield. So I've got my Spectre Shield Lite 1.01. .01. The first thing I'll do is just remove that micro USB uh, power adapter because I don't need that and I'll actually just remove this from the board. Now, this is where I'll mention that while the Spectre Shield Lite doesn't have any of the circuitry required to you know, be able to use or charge batteries, it actually has this little header pin just here that we can use to supply between six and nine volts DC into our development board to power it. And basically to make use of this header pin here, we need to change this here onto the E5V pin at the top there, just the same as we did with the uh, normal Spectre Shield board when it was running off a battery. And for this part, I'll actually use a 1.02 version of the board, which is exactly the same as the 1.01, .01, except the uh, smart card socket is just about one or two millimeters higher up on the board, which basically meant we could use uh, even cheaper pin headers on the bottom. So this one has the pin header already soldered onto there. So I'll just move this QR code scanner over. Okay, so that is done. So we'll move that off to the side. We'll move our development board out of the way. So basically this 3D printed part I've got here not only gives us something to screw the uh, case together with, but also allows us to be able to fit AAA batteries inside this board. And basically to be able to get the six volts we need, we are going to need either four alkaline AAAs or five uh, rechargeable nickel metal hydride ones. Basically this board has also been made so that these nine millimeter uh, AAA battery terminals can either slide 
slide in here at this end or slot in there for the spring end. It also has the provision for a switch uh, that can basically just slot in there, which is this switch here. And to be able to power the unit without the batteries, I've also got this little adapter here, which basically takes a USB-C at one end and outputs six volts uh, at the other end. So basically this switch here is just switching the positive between the battery and the supply coming in over USB-C. So basically we're gonna connect this up so the five batteries are in series and the springs are at these ends and the flat parts are at these ends. So basically we just start off with the negative for the battery. So we just compress the spring in and then just push the whole thing through. There we go. We'll stick our positive at the other end so it will just slide into the channel down on there. Basically USB-C transformer can just slot in there like that and the switch can just sort of squeeze in here like that. We'll just move those wires out of the way. And then to get our five volts, we just wanna connect all these batteries up in series. Once we've got all of those springs in, basically we can actually put this onto this board. Before we do that, we'll just put these spacers on there. These two pieces aren't strictly necessary, but they do help everything to give your self-tapping screws something to bite into. So these are just little silicon cables, so they're just a bit of a mess all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is just basically uh, hold them out of the way because basically what we wanted to make sure is that our pins can go into these pin headers here and the camera can seat into this space in here. It has to sit flush uh, into there. It can't be having any cables or anything squashed underneath, it won't fit. So basically what we'll do is just put this pin header through there, just because the way I've done that won't be easy to feed it through after correctly. Line up all of our pins and make sure the camera is seated correctly and then just squish it down. And is that camera in? Not quite. Hang on, we'll just make sure that's, there we go. Nice and flat all the way in. And now that this has been squished down, uh, we can much more easily feed these cables into some of the little channels that are on the board. And I'll just move it off slightly to squeeze those ones in there. Squish back down. And there's plenty of real estate under there to sort of shove uh, some of this excess in as well. We'll just roll this extra cable it up in under there, it fits just nicely, and I'll plug this on, making sure that the positive is this right-hand terminal here. So I'll just plug on the power, just like that. And if we just wanna test that out, basically I can just connect a USB-C plug into there, I can hear it beep and see it turn on, which is good. And if I switch that, it'll then turn it off because that's putting it into battery mode, but there's no batteries in there. And I could, likewise, I can also get my batteries and just stick my five triple A's in there. Um, it is a bit of a snug fit just here, but they do fit. Five, you can hear that beep as I put the last battery in. So there we go. And look, I'll just switch that off and then just put this whole thing into a case. So I've actually got a translucent version of the case here so we can see what is going on as it all goes in. So I'll just tuck that ribbon cable back up in there, just shove those little silicon spaghetti back in there. Basically, I'll just put it in like this, just shove these under there before we slide it in. There we go. Flex that slightly, let the audio socket in, and that just fits down in there nicely like that. The shield light has some components along the top, so we have a modified version of this top spacer that will just sit there like that. And likewise, we just have some slightly modified versions of these covers here. So you'll notice they have these little clasps on the side that help grip under the PCB. So we sort of just clip that in to the track that it sits in then slide that up, there we go. So that goes in there like that. And the bottom one is the same, it has these sort of little hooks on there. So we just sort of slide that in, press it down into the track, and then we just sort of slide it in like that. 
and that clips shut. And this will actually hold itself together without any screws, though I would not recommend uh, using it that way long term, just because, you know, only these rails are sort of holding the whole thing together. So now that it's in its case, I can just plug that in there and use it uh, with a USB-C connector, power only, so don't have to worry about data. And uh, I'll just put this smart card back in just to show you that that works. I can also just turn it on and that is now running just off the triple A's. There we go, it's running, it's detected the smart card and that is good to go. And if we put that side by side with a full Spectre shield board, we can see that the form factor is basically the same, though obviously there's no power button on the uh, shield light. Uh, and this one has a switch. And the other thing you'll notice is the battery level reading for the full shield board is not there on the shield light. Uh, it's just running the batteries until they go flat. And the only other difference is the orientation of the USB ports on the bottom with the uh, data port obviously not moving because that's part of the development board. But in the uh, shield light, I had to orientate it sideways just because there was no other way to sort of fit both the batteries and the USB-C power adapter in there. And the other thing that's worth being really clear about is this example I've showed you doesn't have any ability to charge the AAA batteries. Uh, though the 3D printed case does make it really easy just to clip the bottom part of the back off. You don't actually need to screw it on. So, you know, swapping them over manually is no problem. And if all of this seems like way too much effort, you want something to just plug and play, but also want the convenience of built-in batteries as opposed to using like, you know, just a power pack or something like that, then perhaps the original uh, Spectre Shield board is for you. And for this shield light running on the triple A's uh, with the power switch, USB-C power adapter, smart cards, case and everything, you know, by my estimation, definitely very doable for around 125 to 150 bucks. Definitely more expensive than DIY options like Jade, but still uh, very competitive when you compare to other retail hardware devices, whether it's, you know, the Keystone, Cold Card Q or Foundation Passport, they will generally go for between 150 and 200 USD. So that is the Spectre Shield light and I'm really happy with how it came out, being able to bring you most of the powerful functionality of the Spectre Shield coming in at a price point that is cheaper than the original Spectre DIY if you made it using the Waveshare QR code scanner, making the powerful and unique features that Spectre offers available to a much wider audience. The other thing I'll say in terms of getting your hands on Spectre or Spectre Shield Lite hardware is that in addition to my little web store that I've been spruiking throughout the video, uh, you can also get it on the BTC Frankenstein store, particularly good if you are in Germany or in Europe generally. And my hope is that by sort of optimizing the design for low cost, short run production, where people just order, you know, five to 10 of them at a time off PCB way, it should make it much easier for someone who might want to set up a local store wherever they happen to be in the world, or to be able to, you know, sell these at conferences, local meetups, or whatever. You know, all of the infrastructure is there to be able to produce these and distribute them in a very distributed way, uh, fabricating them wherever you like or even assembling them by hand. This may find its way into the official Spectre DIY repository, but for the time being, you can find everything that I referred to in this video, schematics, documentation, part numbers, assembly instructions, and so on, on my fork of the Spectre DIY GitHub. Other than that, if you have any experiences with Spectre DIY, any questions about the uh, DIY project in general, uh, you can definitely leave a reply in the comments. Uh, and I'd also encourage you to jump into the uh, Spectre DIY Telegram group if you're someone who's wanting to have a go at this or have any questions uh, that you might want to ask of other members in the Spectre community. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.